Oh, that's an unusual sound. What is that thing? What is that? That's my phone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just didn't. <laughs> I wasn't just going to go on and on. It's called a monologue. <laughs> This is Super Fast Business with James Schramko. James Schramko. Helping you build your business super fast. 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 James Schramko here. Today's guest is a Facebook expert who's been helping me with some innovations on my own Facebook page and has uh, been largely responsible for the change in direction for my fan page recently. Welcome to the call, Victoria Gibson. Hi, James. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for having me. Victoria, what I thought would be interesting for our listeners is a little bit of an update on Facebook. Uh, We've had some very popular episodes with our other good friend, Jennifer Sheehan. We had two Facebook episodes. They're two of the most highly listened to episodes that I've put on internet marketing speed. So there's obviously a big requirement for us to understand Facebook as part of our marketing. It's covered in my Own the Race course training and in my Traffic Grab training. And it's something that I think should be a cornerstone traffic source for most businesses. So what I'm really interested in is for us to talk about what's new, what's interesting with Facebook. And also, I'd love you to tell our listeners, what you've been doing behind the scenes on my own fan page. I'm happy to share some of that information because we've already been getting results from the work that we just did, like almost instantly. So tell me what's going on with Facebook. Okay. Well, like you mentioned, Facebook is an absolutely essential tool uh, for online business now. It's not one of those things you can just have off on the side and and pay attention to every now and again. Um, You do need to have a presence there and you do need to be working it if you want to to get some great value leads and engagement. Um, So, I guess from my perspective, I recommend that people use Facebook as a way to stay connected to their current community or list um, or buyers or potential customers, but also it's a great way to build your list and um, build your community even further. More so than just an email list, as um, we know that with, you know, over a billion people globally on Facebook, the scale is there. So when people talk about, you know, doing, doing other forms of social media, it's all valuable, but I say, why not put your effort into where the people are? And we know that the people are on Facebook and I can guarantee that most of your listeners, customers are or clients are on Facebook. So that's why I think you should definitely be there and have a presence. But it's very easy to say that. Um, it's more important to get very specific about what you need to do to, to bring in the results. Um, now, most people I know who, who try Facebook on their own, um, aren't seeing the results that they were hoping for. Um, It's a very slow process and, you know, they get really disappointed and kind of drop it very quickly. So that's why I kind of try and give out as much advice as I can about using it in the right way. And it does take time and it does take a bit of commitment, as does all content creation and growing your business. But what I love about it is, is it is that it's such a low cost channel to be driving targeted leads to your business. So um, the be- the very first thing you should be doing is having a Facebook business page. Um, so that's not your personal page that you make friends with other people on. That's a it's a dedicated fan page or what used to be called a fan page now is a Facebook page for your business. So that would be the first place I'd tell people to start. I want to ask you about strategy here. Like I'm a big believer in not creating your entire business on someone else's platform. Now, you've said put energy in it, but you also said to get leads for your business. Are you on the same page as me or do you have a different viewpoint that you should build your business on something you own and then use Facebook as an outpost or a signpost pointing people back to it? Um, you know, Have you seen people build everything and lose it just by having everything on Facebook and nowhere else? Yeah, that's and that's a good point. And I always advocate that you build your online business with an email list and your own website. Absolutely. So Facebook really sits alongside your website. Um, it's another 
it's another channel and it's another way for you to showcase your brand. It really is almost, you know, as important as your website nowadays with the volumes of traffic that are on Facebook. Um, their search functionality isn't as good. So it's obviously not going to help you as much as, as your own website. And there's always the risk that you could lose your Facebook page. Um, it's not overly common though. So I think there is a lot of, you know, people worried about things like that. And yes, it is a risk. So you, you want to have your own website and email list, but use Facebook as a way to drive, uh, drive the, your leads and your traffic to your offer on your website or just to your offer in general. You can still have your website and, um, email list, uh, running in parallel. So that's what I'd recommend. Um, and there's ways, and this is what a lot of people aren't doing right, is there's ways of, of making sure that you have your lead capture integrated with your Facebook page. So I want people to start their own Facebook page and it really mirror the offers on their website. With applications, you can have several pages now where you can detail your offers just like you would on a website. And you can have, most importantly, one um, page that is dedicated to giving some sort of free value where you, in exchange for an email address. So that's what I'd term your list building opportunity. People don't get on Facebook looking to buy stuff straight away. They don't, they don't have their wallets out. It's not, it's not, you know, that kind of environment. So selling hard to people on Facebook is not the right approach. The right approach in my, in my view is to showcase your offer clearly and simply when people, um, land on your Facebook page, give them a sense of what you're about and what value you can provide, direct them to your, um, Facebook tab where they can, enter their email and receive something of value for free and then keep communicating with them via the Facebook page and your email list. So just by virtue of you having a great page, they will generally just like your page. Pretty People are pretty free and easy about liking Facebook pages. It's how you keep communicating with those people who've liked your page um, and making sure that you have their email address as a backup that's important. And then you've got two really great channels to keep nurturing those prospects and then offering them, um, you know, good services, whatever your offer is, as you go, so that that's the way that you're going to be getting sales from them. So in our case, we've just been setting up one of those things, like a page just to capture email leads. Can you explain how that happened? How do we do that? Okay, so what we wanted to do with um, James's page is that James has got great engagement or you've got great, great engagement on your page um, and you know it's been a valuable channel for you uh, in terms of traffic and leads, um, but it was a matter of when you landed on James's page, it, it you got a sense from the posts of what James' message was about, but really in terms of visually, it was really hard to see straight away what James was offering, what his business was about, and how you could access more from James, be it from a free perspective or a paid perspective. So what we did is we changed his timeline cover um, just to, you know, a nice a nice image of him and his name. I just kept it super simple, put a profile picture that included his business name, and then, or yours, I keep referring you to you in the third person, but anyway, and you're, you're right there. But, um, and then we, with it, with a Facebook app, you can custom code whatever you'd code on a website. You can custom code on a Facebook app that then becomes another, fa- uh, another page on your Facebook page. So what we were able to do was create an opt in land or a landing page, just a general squeeze page that had a giveaway for his wealthification program. So many of you will be familiar with um, the wealthification um, business wealth training. So um, James gives actually was already doing this on his website, giving away two free modules of this training. So that's a great value incentive for people to connect with James and an excellent reward for trading an email address. So why not put that where a lot of his um, community already is and they're on Facebook? So we were able to put that in an app, highlight that under the timeline cover. So we've put two free modules under there. So go to go to his page and take a look at facebook.com forward slash super fast business and you can see it in action there. But there's another step on top of that that needs to happen in that just setting that up won't 
you know, bring you a flood of leads. There is a paid component and a promotional component that needs to be added on top. And that's using Facebook ads in conjunction with your Facebook page. So a lot of people may have tried Facebook ads and be used to paying, you know, a dollar a click in some niche, uh, in some niches and thinking it's just too expensive. It's not working. But if you have the funnel set up right and you're offering something of value at no cost to build your list and you have the back end to offer um, products and services for sale once you've got their email address, then this strategy can work very well to not only build your email list but also build your Facebook page, your activity and your engagement. So once you have that that page, what what I recommend and what we just kicked off doing for James is doing posts that include a link to the lead capture page on Facebook. So we're keeping them on Facebook. We do a post that um, has a quick call to action, pointing people to the free offer or the value. And, you know, obviously you don't want to scream free, free all the time, but um, it depends what your messaging is, who your market is. You know that the best but just keep it super short. Um, So don't write, you know, three or four lines. Um, A lot of people do make that mistake on Facebook of writing really long posts. They don't get as much engagement. And for this purpose, it's really important that you don't do that. One sentence maximum, put a link, um, preferably a shortened one because you don't want to take up too much space, um, to the Facebook application. And then what you can do is either... Um, if you have more than 400 fans, you can make it a promoted post where you just promote it to people who have already liked your page if you've already got a community happening. Or if, you ha- if you're like many people who are still lingering, you know, around a couple of hundred fans, then what you can do to build your fan count and then the side effect is also getting your email list is do a page post ad. So once you've posted that on your Facebook page, you can go into the ads manager and select that you want to promote a page post. Click on that and um, what what that will do is show up, add, add a nice image in the post. That's really important as well. You want to add an image. Um, and then what happens is that that p- promoter or that page post actually shows up double the size of a normal Facebook ad. But even better than that, it you can be getting clicks for, you know, around 10 to 25 cents rather than paying, you know, upwards of a dollar like some people do when they jump into Facebook ads. So I think getting traffic to an offer for, you know, anywhere from 10 to 30 cents is you know, is, is pretty good value traffic. Um, now obviously you've got to then convert them on the other end after you've got their email address to get the revenue, but we all know, you know, leads are valuable if you've got the right channels afterwards. So that's my advice. So using page post ads, and once you've built your fan page above 400 fans, you can use the promoted posts, which start, um, showing up in your fans news feeds. Did you actually take a breath then, Victoria? No. <laughs> I was about to say that's a lot, isn't it? It sounds really confusing. It's not that confusing. <laughs> you must know this stuff back to front. I mean, it's fascinating to listen to that. I, I could literally go and make a coffee while you explain this. Yeah. How does one actually make these apps? Like, you know, in this case, you've gone away and, and created something and come back to me and said, here is your opt in page. And it looks fantastic. How does someone make that? Okay. If you, there's options to make them yourself with software. Um, there's free software that you can do that with. So the one that we've done, um, on your page is actually done using, um, an application or a software program called Woobox, W O O B O X dot com. Now you can download that and get one free tab. So if you're nifty with some, some coding, then great. You can put your code in there and, and it pops up and all is well. Um, if you're not as nifty with coding, and I'm generally not, so one of the ways that you can do it at no cost, if you already have, um, you know, a, a page on your website that you'd perhaps like to import into Facebook, is go to um, either Woobox or there's other creation tools as well. Um, one's called FanPageEngine.com. Um, another one is called PageModo, P-A-G-E-M-O-D-O.com. There's a whole wealth of them. You can actually just Google, you know, create a free Facebook app and you'll get a lot of different software options. Now, um, generally they do give you one for free, so so don't pay for it. If you're um, handy with the coding, 
all you generally need to do is install that app on your fan page um, and then follow the drag and drop software prompts in this in the tool to um, add your code or a link in an iframe. The main difference between Facebook app page and normal web pages, and this is the bit where everyone kind of runs into trouble and one of the most frustrating parts, is that those apps are only um, 800 pixels wide. So if you take a normal web page, often it will be too wide and it's going to get all wonky. So that can be kind of annoying and that you, sometimes it's not just a matter of cutting and pasting. You might need to just get your web page redone in a more narrow size. So um, once you've done that, essentially, if you do already have a web page that's going to fit in there, you can do it for free, which is even better. Um, I've got resources on my blog at marvio.com that show you how to do that. Um, it's best to watch somebody show you on a video. Um, also, a lot of those software tools will have videos and showing you how to do it. It sounds overwhelming, um, but once you kind of break it down, it, it's it's not too hard. Well, the reason I asked for you to do it for me is because – I don't want to be a code monkey. I've got other things to do in my business. So I strongly recommend that people just get this done and don't try and be a web tech expert unless this is your specialist field. It's better to have these things done. But the interesting thing for me is when we said make it happen and you went out and installed it, we added a tracking code to the opt-in so that I know which ones came from that particular page and this morning we logged in after just setting it up yesterday and already today there were I think 11 opt-ins that were tagged to that particular opt-in that just appeared from nothing. So I could either be trying to learn code for the next few days or I can just start receiving these opt-ins which are probably going to happen. I'm guessing you know, I'll probably get 10 every eight hours. I'm probably going to get an opt-in every hour on the current run rate unless we change something, and I imagine we'll be optimising and increasing that. Yes, absolutely. And also the important point there about not doing it yourself is that the, the conversion elements on Facebook are different to a, to a general website. Then they're not totally dissimilar, but there are some some things that, you know, um, that you need to be aware of. So putting something together and it's still looking a little janky is going to, you know, impact on your opt-ins. And if you're, particularly if you're paying for leads, I don't want anyone to waste any opportunity. So I figure it's something that I know I get somebody to do it for me because I don't sit there and code it either. I know what works and I know how to, you know, create something that looks great and works well, but I don't sit there and actually code it myself either because I haven't got the time or the patience for that. So, I, I completely support your notion. <laughs> well, and the thing is you're, you're getting access to a whole bunch of customers, right? You're seeing heaps of different campaigns and working really hard on getting results. So you can go straight for the jugular, so to speak, and set up something out of the box that's going to be close to the mark compared to someone testing it. The other thing that is a concern for me, having tried to do things before, I once set up a blog that was iframed in a fan page or something but Facebook from time to time tend to change things and I think it's good to have that support of someone be able to just come along and update it rather than having to be responsible for when things break. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's a great idea. So yeah, so I th- I think that that's the first step. You want to be and that you want to be capturing leads on your Facebook page and that's goes back to your own the race course philosophy. You know, you've then got the backup that if something happened with Facebook or Facebook um, started, you know, dropping in popularity or what, whatever it may be, you've you've got your backup that you've been building your list and you've got another way to contact all those people. So, but on the flip side, if Facebook continues to grow, you're building another community on Facebook that you can keep talking to for free once you're building those fans, don't forget. So, you've got another place um, that and this kind of co- starts combating a bit of those lower open rates. So, you know, unless you're some sort of superstar, not many people are getting kind of 30 to 40% open rates. Um, I mean, it depends what email software you use because some a- Aweber tends to be a lot higher than the others. But, um, you know, it, it's pretty hard to get to all your email list via even just by sending weekly emails. So this way you can start using 
your Facebook page to be talking to people too. And it's just a much friendlier, easy way to to get a message out because people are already on Facebook. You show up in their newsfeed and they see, you know, a little quick message from you with maybe a link or something of value. And, you know, they're a lot more receptive because they're looking often at kind of wasting time. <laughs> wasting time or escaping from their everyday life. So they're often in a really receptive mood to investigate what you've got to offer. So that can be um, a really good way to build on your email marketing. Nice. Now, we've just changed the header on my fan page. Can you tell me what uh, what the thoughts were around that and what are some of the things people should consider for when they're setting up that top part of their fan page? Yeah. So that's called a timeline cover. So your big sort of bill, it's think of it like your billboard. It's a billboard for your brand, for your business. Um, You want people to be able to land on your page, look at that timeline image and understand exactly what it is you're about, or at least get a sense of, of who you are and what you've got to offer. So with yours, you've, you've got a lot of, um, you know, a lot of businesses and offers to, um, you know, to promote and you're also a bit of a expert or, you know, I know you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want to admit that, but you know, you're, you're a bit of a thought leader in the online marketing industry. So it does have to be very much all about you. You are your brand. It's James Shramko. People want to know, who, you know, who James Shramko is. And we're not going to write a whole, you know, diatribe on there about all your um, amazing, <laughs> amazing things, but it's great to just have a nice engaging headshot of you and your name and people land there and they go, okay, I'm in James's space. Now what's James got to offer me? Well, under that big image, we've got some little tabs under there that point to different offers, but the main offer is that two free modules of wealthification. So once they get a sense of who you are, they've got options to click through and get some more information from you. Um, the other great thing is you're posting regularly on the, on your page. So there's links to your blog um, and your websites. So they can also go off onto your other properties from the Facebook page. But getting that timeline cover, make sure you've got a nice clear image that, like I said, represents your brand. There are guidelines that you need to follow. You can't put, um, you know, web addresses and calls to action um, on that photo because Facebook can take your page down for that. So just keep it very simple. It's supposed to follow, you know, a little bit like personal profiles in that it's supposed to be a nice image that represents something about you. And in this case, it's something that represent is representative of your brand. Right, so a picture of you. Yeah, picture of you is great. Um, or if, uh, yeah, that that's generally the best option. It depends what your business is, because someone might have a you know an offline shop or a, you know a shop or a um uh, an a, event or something. You know, it depends what industry you're in. You might want to put someone using your product or service or your typical kind of customer. It it just has to be something that that relates to your brand. But yeah great starting point is you because people do like the human element of Facebook and they want to know who they're dealing with. So it's 851 pixels wide by 315 high. So it's just a matter of creating it, creating the image. Then you click on your timeline cover on your business page and it will say upload a new timeline cover. So you can just um, upload it directly to the Facebook page. Then go to your profile picture, which is still important as well, the little um, square picture that sits on the timeline because that's going to come up every time you post as your page or you post something on your page so or you comment on other people's posts, um, replying to comments, all that kind of thing. So ideally that that should be your logo or um, a logo over your um, headshot as well is good so you keep the human element. Um, but that's about uh, 160 by 160 or 190 by 190. It just depends. Sometimes Facebook have just changed it again. So um, create that as well. That's simply a matter of just clicking on the square and uploading once again. Um, So it doesn't have to be super hard. And if you're just starting your Facebook page, then at least do that and put your timeline and your profile picture and get comfortable with posting daily. I just tell people before you get too sophisticated, just get your page up and start posting daily and just getting used to it being part of your daily routine. So content is still really, really important. What sort of things do people post about? I I hear people like they might have a shop and they say, what can I post about for my shop? Have you got some ideas there? Okay, so new products coming in, um, you know, you can talk about um, 
so individual you know stock items that is something new that's come in or it might be that it's christmas obviously in a couple of weeks christmas so a few weeks um so you could be talking about you know have you you know here's a, a couple of ideas for stocking stuffers you want to be balancing sales messaging with engaging messaging so people will start to turn off if you just promote um products and ask people to buy stuff. Facebook is more about engagement. People want value and they do on the surface want it for nothing. So it's a matter of starting a conversation. So think about if it was, if you did have some new merchandise coming in for Christmas, um, you could put something like, you know, how, how big are your kids, um, Christmas stockings this year or something like that. You could do something quite general like that, but put a link to the product um, if you've got an online store. So the first sort of leading post is actually not, hey, buy my stuff. It's, hey, here's, um, you know, I'm asking you a question, encouraging a response. Because the more response you start getting on your page, the more you'll be showing up in people's news feeds. So you want to be really mindful that you're asking questions and encouraging interaction. And you want to make the answer to the question simple. Like it needs to be yes, no, you know, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, just something that people instantly read and know the answer and they can type in very quickly. If you're going to ask, you know, what's the square root of, root of this, that and the other, where people have to stop and think or, you know, why is your mum so special? People have to think about that and it's it's just they'll just move on. I, I always say that people on Facebook have ADD. They don't spend long on on things, so you need to capture their attention and make it easy for them to interact with you. So something would be better like, um, you know, um, how old is your mum? Or, you know, not that you'd want to know that on your page, but something like that where it's an easy answer, oh, my mum's 38 or whatever it is. You know, not that you put that in, it's not a great example, but you, you know what I'm trying to say. Don't ask people things that they have to really think about the answer because you won't get the interaction. So like, you want to be stimulating people to like, comment and share on your post. And that's what's going to be elevating your page a little bit like all your SEO magic and um, Google algorithm stuff. Facebook has its own algorithm and it decides how your posts are served up and to who, depending on interest level and engagement. So one of the other really important things you should be doing on your page is making sure that you're engaging with your audience and attracting as many comments as you can. Right. So what can the average person do then? We're, we're just just a quick recap. They can make a nice timeline header. They can make a good thumbnail image. They can set up an opt-in page using any number of apps. They can tag those opt-ins to know that those uh, opt-ins are coming from that source. They can start running some paid traffic, promoted posts or sponsored stories, I guess. Uh, is sponsored stories a possibility for that? Yeah, once you get – you only want to do sponsored stories once you get a, a certain level of fans. If you've got under a 1,000 fans, don't worry about sponsored stories at this point in time. Facebook have changed their sponsored stories a little, so you've got a bit of an opportunity to to get some traction before you've got a 1,000 fans. But, look, to not complicate it, just I say focus on the page post ads and the promoted post ads to start. And then you just post the best content you can to your site and get interaction. Yeah, so and the biggest point there is regularly. So what I see on so many people's pages and a lot of my clients as well, if I don't manage their page for them, is that they do a page every five days. It's just not enough. You need to be doing posting daily. Now everyone's going to freak out and go, I haven't got time. But that's the beauty of Facebook. They keep improving the platform and they actually have a little um, clock icon on your posting post the place where you post I call it post box but it sounds like a letterbox the posting box part there's a little clock icon if you click on that in the bottom left hand side you have the ability to schedule six months worth of posts in there so one day sit down crack out you know a good couple of months worth in an hour or so and it's done for you make sure you're logging into facebook and monitoring people's responses and interacting with people in the comments like any comments that get commented on your page just be present you know and engage with it these people want to hear from you if they've liked your page that they want to hear more from you so of course that is a great 
client prospect for you and you, you need to be present and people want to engage with you there. The other thing is people will can send you messages if you turn on your message function. People can send you messages and ask questions just like it becomes like a little customer support line or, you know, an inquiry line. You can get some really valuable leads and prospects through that messaging function. So um, keep that in mind as well that just look at it as a, as a as something to run parallel to your website. All right, Victoria. So we've got a good setup now. We've got our page looking good. We're collecting opt-ins. We've got paid traffic. What I want to do is I want to sort of dig into your barrel of uh, experience because you're handling this stuff all the time. Have you had any recent examples of things that you thought were particularly uh, exciting or interesting that you might want to share with our listeners? Yeah, well, even just this past weekend, um, I've had my own um promotion running. So I run promotions and Facebook ad campaigns for clients as well as for my own online marketing presence. So I um, produced a free video series um, that I wanted to drive leads to. So over the weekend, I was able to, um, you know, with with a Facebook app, put put my opt-in on Facebook and start using just page post ads. Um, And I was getting under 20 cent clicks there. But the best part is I was able to increase my list by 30% in the last, well, since it's Wednesday today. So since Saturday, um, so within five days, I've been able to increase my list by 30%, um, looking at, you know, under 20 cent clicks. Nice. So when you talk about a price of a click being good, I guess you must be gauging that against the, the lifetime value of a customer, right? Yeah, obviously you want to work out how much a lead is worth to you and that's going to be vary to other people. Some people are happy to pay up to $5 a lead because they've got higher price consulting services. Gotcha. So how else can we use these techniques? Now we've got this powerful Facebook traffic machine. <laughs> what can we point them at? <laughs> well, that's that's obviously you can point off Facebook as well. I am recommending one specific strategy of using Facebook um, only because it's cheaper and, um, you know, people tend to engage with it a lot more on Facebook and you get a lot more features from Facebook's um, platform than you do just sending directly to your own landing page. But if you've got a highly converting landing page that sits somewhere online, you can be pointing Facebook ads direct to that um, that what that landing page and, and getting results that way as well. Um, so really it's, it's twofold. You want to be using it as, a, um, you know, to build leads, but also to actually build your Facebook page. So don't neglect the opportunity to be using paid traffic to not only build your leads, but also build your Facebook page because that's another channel you can keep talking to, pe- talking to them for free down the track. So you don't always have to pay once you get to a certain level you can, you know, once you build your page up to say 5,000 to 10,000 fans, you've got a really nice little channel to start promoting to for free. Yeah. Like 10,000 fans sounds, it sounds like a lot. I think I'm not quite at 5,000. You're not far off 5,000. Yeah. As we record this, but at some point I had 1,000 and then 2,000 and with a combination of uh, regular posting, promoted posts, sponsored posts, stories. I mean, I haven't been just trying to get likes. Of course, my main goal is to bring people back to my website and have them as a full subscriber to my uh, Office Autopilot subscription base. That is my goal. There's no doubt about that. Facebook's great, but I want to use that as a funnel towards my business. If there was nothing in it at all for it, I think that my time on Facebook would be quite limited, like watching television. It's okay to do occasionally, watch a Grand Prix or something, but if there's more of a payoff involved, then it's it's somewhere where I do want to contribute and build up that community. But I know that the number one goal is to bring them back to my website and have them on my email list. And I, I still think some people are uh, a little bit too focused on or they sort of forget that it's not their asset. And uh, and I've also experienced people have trouble bringing their customers off Facebook because it's so fun being on Facebook. They have Facebook groups, they have Facebook pages, but they've got nothing outside of Facebook. So that's really the message I would like to help people with is that you can have both. You can You can have your cake and eat it too if you use some of these strategies. Yeah, absolutely. I support that for sure. Victoria, thank you so much for sharing. Hopefully, we've given out some ideas and a couple of action items. If you could 
be so kind as to give give a couple of summary action items. What can someone do when they hang up their headphones after this podcast? What can they do to get their Facebook into gear? And where can they find out about Victoria Gibson, my Facebook friend? <laughs> Um, the first thing I want people to do is go and get a Facebook, set up a Facebook page if you don't already have one. You can Google how to set one up or come to my website. Um, I've got some articles on there of how to do that um, at www.marveo.com. So that's M-A-R-V-E-O.com um, where you'll find my articles, free articles and resources, but also um, I've, I offer done-for-you campaign management services um, and campaign uh, campaign coaching and training and a whole lot of stuff. So hop along there for any resources and guidance, but really just make sure you've got your page set up. And if you already have it set up, I want you to look at getting some lead capture elements on your page um, and just posting daily, please. I'd like to see you all posting daily. I think that's going to make a really big difference and you won't see it straight away, but it definitely starts building. So Come over to my site and find out how you can do some of the strategies I talked about. Um, I know it can seem a little overwhelming, but I'll break it down so it seems easier than it <laughs> than it sounds. Where's your site, Victoria? Marveo.com, M-A-R-V-E-O.com. There you go. Well, thank you, Victoria Gibson from Marveo.com. A big Facebook update there for us. And also, I'd love you to place your comments right near this episode. I'm sure Victoria will come along and answer if you have a few questions. Until next time, I'm James Shramko. This is internetmarketingspeed.com. Discover how to build your business super fast. Check out superfastbusiness.com.